Welcome to Enabling School Leadership, a podcast dedicated to those entrusted with the privilege of leading schools. This is our second episode, and I'm excited to share the topic of, of this episode with you. It is a hot topic. It is one which affects all of us, particularly those of us who are keen on moving and driving our schools forward. Today, we're going to be discussing the topic of innovation in our schools. What is innovation, what it isn't, and how we can drive this in our school communities. It's been good to see the interest in the first episode of this podcast, and I would encourage you to subscribe using your podcast service. This is available now on Google Podcasts, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, you name it, we're there. So please go ahead and subscribe. Also make sure that you share this podcast with those who, uh, for whom you think it would be helpful. Today we're going to be discussing the topic of innovation. What does that buzzword actually mean? We read a lot about it. We see it up in the vision statements of schools, in the mission statements of schools. But what does it really mean? What is innovation? I'd like to start by perhaps discussing what innovation is not. Innovation isn't simply adding technology. There's a temptation to think that a school is innovative when you walk into classrooms and see children using iPads, Chromebooks, laptops, and so forth. There's the assumption that because they are using technology, they are being innovative. We need to stop for a moment and consider how they are using that technology. For what purpose are they using technology? Is that technology enhancing the outcomes of their learning? So don't be tempted to think that using technology equates to being an innovative school. Innovation also isn't just simply adding more new ideas without first having discussions about what needs to be dropped. Innovation also isn't simply tossing out ideas that have worked before to make space for the next best thing. It's not chasing the cool ideas which others seem to be implementing successfully in their contexts. And certainly, being an innovative school does not mean that you are keeping the principal or administrators or education officials happy. That's no reason to be innovative at all. So what then is innovation? Well, I think first and foremost, innovation can be described as a mindset. It's a willingness to try something new and to fail while trying. It's making time to reflect on what is and isn't working in our school classrooms or in our departments. It's a desire to take considered risks to improve the learning outcomes for our children. Innovation is being open to learning from others and being willing to adopt something that wasn't our idea to begin with. It's building on what we already know to find new ways of improving the learning outcomes. Innovation is also integrating the world outside of the classroom in new ways and the world inside the classroom. It is understanding that our children do live in a connected digital world. And it's the ability or it's the practice of giving them opportunity to use technology to solve real world problems to engage with technology in ways that enhance outcomes that make them excited about learning in new and innovative ways. You know, so many of our schools will use the word innovative or innovation in letter, on letterheads, in mission statements, in vision statements. But unless those words, innovate and innovation, are ingrained in the school's DNA, they tend simply to remain as words on paper. Innovation needs to be in everything we do, in our approach to academics, in our approach to our sporting program, our arts and culture, our aesthetics in the building, and our planning, and certainly in our curriculum delivery. Otherwise, why would we use those words in the first place? So we also need to think beyond the immediate. We need to open our minds to new possibilities, to new thinking, and to new practice. You know, if we don't bring a deliberate approach to innovation in our schools, we quickly lose relevance in a rapidly changing world. And those schools, which perhaps have been considered behind ours, will charge past, leaving us to pick up the pieces. Quite frankly, our children deserve better.
we need to start with what we can do. It is easy for us to become so caught up in the bigger issues around education, the socioeconomic issues our children are facing and so forth. These are real and they, they certainly deserve our attention. But they can't stop us from, or they should not stop us from becoming innovative in our approach. They shouldn't stop us from having discussions and planning around bringing new innovative ideas into our school. The biggest stumbling block to the implementation of innovation is not our resources. It's not our teaching staff. It's not our district officials or education department officials. It is, in fact, I believe, a closed mindset that does not allow itself to consider anything that seems different or that may require us to leave our comfort zones. It is imperative that we develop a mindset that allows us to take our professional knowledge, the care and concern for our children, our desire to learn and our willingness to take risks, to fail and to try again, and then to fail and to try again, and to fail and to try again, and reiterate that process over and over again. So how can we make time to consider innovation when our schools are such busy places? Perhaps we need to start by having brave conversations about what needs to change in our school, what needs to be stopped in our school, what needs to be added. We need to discuss and implement more effective ways of assessment and feedback to our children. Perhaps we should consider managing our timetables differently. Perhaps a different approach to managing the frequency of assessment and feedback. Many times we want to, as school leaders, implement an innovative practice by gathering our staff together for a large group professional development session. I'm not convinced that this is the best methodology. My experience and, quite frankly, my gut feel tells me that when we gather people in small groups, in grade groups, in department groupings, we can generate real discussion. We can grapple with realities that are relevant to that small group. And we can address the fears that folk might have about implementing change and innovation. So I would say to you, school leaders, be like Nike. Yes, it's a cliche, we've heard it before. But quite honestly, this is now what is required. Be like Nike. Stop looking for permission for new ideas. Just do it. Develop a problem-solving, outcome-seeking mindset and just get on with it. I will leave you with four questions today that require you to engage in some personal reflection. You may want to share these questions with your teens and you may in fact also want to share your own personal answers. So here are the four questions. Number one, how does the word innovation make you feel? Why does it make you feel that way? Number two, what frightens you about bringing an innovation focus to your school? Number three, what excites you about focusing on innovation in your school? And lastly, what do you think you need to do to develop your own personal innovation mindset? I believe that as we answer these questions, we gain greater insight into our own personal approach to innovation. I don't believe that we can leave innovation sitting in a box on the shelf. It is something that we need to be doing in our schools as part of our leadership. It is about the conversations we're having. It's about the engagement that we're having with parents, with staff, and indeed with our children. So my challenge to you is this. What are you planning on doing tomorrow to begin an innovation conversation in your school? Don't let fear hold you back. Just do it. I hope this has been a, a helpful episode for you, particularly for those of you who are grappling with change in your schools. Perhaps you are grappling with the fact that you feel a bit stagnant or that your school feels stuck. I do hope this has been helpful as you consider taking that next step in bringing innovative change into your school community. I look forward to being with you all again in a couple of weeks' time for episode three of Enabling School Leadership. Please don't forget to subscribe, share the podcast. Take care, everyone. Lead well. See you soon.